Welcome back to this week's technical. For those of you who are new to the channel, these technical videos are hopefully a bit shorter, nice and concise, but relatively in-depth and technical introductions to certain veterinary topics. If you like this video, by all means, go and have a look at some of my previous videos, both other technicals and the straightforward vlogs. If you like what you see and what you hear, go ahead, click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it, leave me a comment, and like the video. Let's get into this topic. Today, we are talking about a class of wormer. Just in case you're not aware, a wormer is a product that kills some sort of worms within cattle and sheep. Typically, we're talking about roundworms that live in the gut, although it might be roundworms that live elsewhere. They might be lungworms. We can be talking about tapeworms, which is another class of worms altogether. We might even be talking about fluke, which are related to worms. There are lots of different products available and they can be classified in several different ways. The traditional classifications for different classes of wormers, at least for livestock, is by number or color. Historically, there have been three different groups. The group ones, the whites, the group twos, the yellows, and the group threes, which are the clears. I'd like to tackle these one by one in different videos and why don't we start with number one. The group one, or white wormers, belong to a family of chemicals, a family of compounds called the benzimidazoles. Hence, they are often also known as the BZs. Compounds belonging to this family often end their name with bendazole or dazole. So if you see that on a bottle of product or on a data sheet, that's a clue that you're looking at the BZ. For example, our bendazole Ricobendazole and Fenbendazole are all BZs. They are the oldest established group of wormers being introduced, at least in the UK, around about the 1960s. They have some other common features. Number one, in the UK, at least at the time of making this video, they are only available in oral preparations. So that means you can't get porons, topical products, and you can't get injectable white wormers. Once given, the products go into the rumen and sit there as a little reservoir. That means it's important when giving them to get the product over the tongue so it doesn't bypass this compartment of the stomach. They all act on and kill worms in the same way. Essentially, they prevent the worms from taking up glucose, which they need for energy, and starve them. They are all, with one exception, fairly broad spectrum. Some are also effective against liver fluke, although that is just adult liver fluke rather than any of the immature stages, and the dose is often higher than the typical worm dose. Likewise, most products are going to kill tapeworms and lungworms as well. The BZ exception to that broad spectrum activity is actually triclobendazole. Now, most of you will be familiar with triclobendazole, not as a wormer, but as a flucicide because it has that exceptional ability to kill young immature liver fluke. Triclobendazole isn't active against gut worms, so it is somewhat the dark horse of the pack. Group one wormers are like group three, group four, and group five, active against hypobiotic larvae. That means immature gut larvae that have gone into hypobiosis, essentially arrested development within the livestock animal, which happens in the colder months of the year. Resistance to wormers, especially in sheep populations, is very common. And that is certainly the case for white wormers, the first case of resistance being reported in 1984, where we go looking in different parts of the UK, somewhere between 70 to 95% of farms have worm populations that are resistant to white wormers. White wormer resistance has been reported in pretty much every significant gut worm species in sheep. It tends to be much rarer in nematodirus for reasons we don't fully understand, probably related to its life cycle. But even in nematodirus, there has been the occasional instance of resistance. The resistance profile of worms of cattle in the UK is much less well understood, probably not quite as severe, but a lot of these things are hunches. A lot of these things are based on educated guesswork. And we know in any parasite, if we use a product consistently and regularly, resistance will occur. So where do these group one white BZ wormers fit into your farm? Of course, that is a conversation to have with your vet. A good place to start with both cattle or sheep is probably some sort of efficacy test. That may well be a post-drench check, it may well be what's called a fecal egg count reduction test. Talk to your vet about that, 
get a baseline. Are the worm populations on your farm in cattle and sheep resistant or susceptible to white wormers? On many of our farms, lambs will get a white wormer as their first dose of the summer during that period when nematodiris has hatched because it tends not to show that resistance as we discussed. White wormer in cattle may well be used as a housing treatment in calves against gut worms and lung worms. In some cases, its activity against liver fluke is useful, but that needs to be carefully considered according to which stage of liver fluke you are looking to treat. As with all parasite issues, I would recommend planning treatments well ahead of time with your vet. That's it for now. I'm going to pick up the other groups of wormers in future videos. In the meantime, if you have any other questions, I've linked to some great technical resources from SCOPS and your vet is a great font of knowledge. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone. If you like that, don't forget to subscribe, ring the little bell, like the video and leave me a comment over and out.